it is. And one of the earlier examples of something that really caught my attention was the Jurassic Park score. Mm. Um, I was at the perfect age. I was 10 years old, uh, 11 years old when that came out. Um, I know my, I remember my family went to see uh, Sleepless in Seattle in the neighboring uh, uh, theater. And I was over by myself watching Jurassic Park and um, which maybe I don't recommend for an 11 year old is a little bit scary, but um, I remember being really excited by the, um, the journey to the island queue, mm-hmm. which is when the helicopter is flying towards the island and we get the big uh, theme uh, for the first time on those exteriors. And I was really interested in how they got the, the, the big trumpet fanfare to line up. Every time they cut out of the helicopter, the theme would play. Mm-hmm. And then they cut back into the helicopter, be dialogue, and they had some underscoring music. And then they cut back outside and the theme would play again. over here and that piece, look well have landed by the time you get it right come along and i was really fascinated like how did they get it to line up exactly like that i think of moments in films that are so tied to the score you know like you think i mean think of jaws you know like these moments where it's like it's so in sync with what you're seeing what you're hearing is that just a matter of you like are you working in coordination with the editor and giving them a track to cut to at any point, or are you just adjusting your music to match their edit? Like where's the give and take there in the push and pull. Cause like I've watched so much behind the scene and I'm always like, yeah, but how like in this helicopter moment, Jurassic park, how are they deciding to pull that music back? Are they just watching on the screen and stopping there? Are they sending to the editor saying, this is the music, like cut it to it. Like, what, where's that balance and and collaboration between you and the editor? Because I have to imagine that's a lot of conversation back and forth. It can be um, <clears throat> ninety nine times out of a hundred, um, editorial and music are completely separate and mm. also not in sync. So, mm. in other words, get I get an edit to work with, and then hopefully it's locked cut, um, and then I'm working off of something that gotcha. is already cut. What you're talking about does happen and has happened um you know famous examples um like uh, hans zimmer on gladiator he worked very much in tandem with the editor um he as insofar as i remember he brought an editing bay into the studio so that he could work next door to the editor and uh have that back and forth collaboration um we're not we don't always have those resources uh, but, be a little um, expensive and, to and that, to, yeah. to some of your and in, in some of your older examples, um, the ET bike chase, for example, mm-hmm. another famous um, editing music example. John Williams is doing what's called free conducting, where he's not using a click track, using something called streamers to align hit points and conducting, watching the picture and and trying to coordinate his conducting with what he sees mm-hmm. on the picture, and and have, and the streamer will come across this. Um, the screen and mm. when it hits the end there's a there's a pop there's a dot that happens that that's your sync point this is before digital you know yeah. workstations and you know they were recording that and they were having the hardest time getting it in sync so famously uh steven spielberg says just create the music do what you need to do and we'll edit the chase it can go both ways sure uh, but but especially with digital workflow now um it's mostly common to just get a piece of locked footage and then put music to it. 